This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Parrish, and you are listening to Vacation the Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. Ow, my aching back. Uh, you'll get that in a couple months. Anyway... Welcome back to Before the Bat. I am Phil, and joining me on this long, long journey is... Hey, you complained about No Man's Land. Um, remember when I said it could be worse? Well, you're about to find out. Anyway, yes, for those of you not to know, uh... We're going to slow down a little bit on the Arrowverse stuff. Uh, of course, we're going to, when Crisis comes back, we're going to cover that. Uh, probably, oh, definitely the, season, the series finale of Arrow and maybe some uh, season finales. But otherwise, we're going to be talking some Batman. And for the immediate future, we're going to be talk. We're going to be starting our, uh, we're going to be giving you Batman Nightfall, basically from beginning to end. An in depth review. So we're gonna just, we're going to start with some uh, prequels. This first episode we're going to cover Batman four eighty four and four eighty five from September and October nineteen ninety two. Oh little baby brother. <laughs> Uh, I remember reading these when they were new. But I figured, uh, yeah, get, give us some flavor, give us some background, do some of these uh, prequels. Plus, this this first, well, these first two issues are a uh, Black Mask story, which couldn't hurt, you know, with the character about the, about the debut in the Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey movie. Uh, did, did they say Batwoman was going to do that at the end of the season two? Though? Oh, Black Mask? Her. Yeah, but that was, uh, we got you covered, so we'll see how that thing goes. Yeah, well, either way, the character's come in the live action in some, at least one form, so. Who's playing Black Mask in Birds of Prey? I forget. Oh, isn't it, um. Is it Steve Bush? Oh, no, it's not. No. It's not Josh Tatora either. I'm losing it. No, it's, um. Let me, let me double check this before I, uh. Yeah, I couldn't believe this when I saw it. it it's, uh, Ewan McGregor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you really want to do that before you do your Obi-Wan series? That's fine. That's fine. Keep them humble. I guess. They must have really... Uh, Backed up the money truck. The money on you. Oh, hell yeah. Because, I mean, besides... Yeah, the, he, did, he did the prequels. It can be worse than the prequels. Well, I was trying to think. Besides Margot Robbie, is he, like, the only other, like, like big name in that movie? Oh no, Rosie Perez is in there. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like no disrespect, Miss Perez, but it's been a while. No. Oh. Okay? It's been a while since "Do the Right Thing" came out. Just saying. Just saying. No. <laughs> anyway, should we get to these issues? Let's do it. So basically, we open with Batman four eighty four. Night in Gotham City, so of course someone's torching a uh, jewelry store. Yeah. Uh, oh, and someone leaves a mask behind. Of course. He's back! <laughs> I know. Because I was trying to think, I'm pretty sure this may be Black Mask's first appearance after Crisis. Really? I'm pretty sure, because I don't remember seeing the or reading about the character at all after crisis i think every other appearance he had made i don't think he had made too many before this but it was they were all pre-crisis i thought like maybe right before about right. yeah so this might be the, his first post-crisis appearance but they still used crisis to been a while ago so <laughs> i know that's what i'm saying it was well like six years or so but i mean because they used the, pre- the pre- restraint <laughs> yeah well they used the pre-crisis origin so that's what i'm saying i don't think he made that many appearances before you know crisis yeah. Uh, and then it's in the morning, and they see Bruce Wayne checking, you know, fire department. Everybody's there checking the fire, checking the scene. All the reporters want to know. 
Mr. Wayne, is someone after you? Yeah, you're the rich guy. Exactly. Uh, oh, and then he runs into Vicky. Vicky Vale. Oh, boy. Was I glad they got rid of that character. Oh, well, yeah, this is a couple months after she already broke up with him. She's dating a fellow reporter. Because for some reason, he just couldn't commit. Because you're not Selena. Is your name Gotham? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, and then in this, you know, after Vicky walks away, breaks his heart and walks away, uh, you know, he, well, he's, he's feeling fragmented. He's feeling tired. He's feeling something's off. He's, he's lost his own. As you do when you get old, you just gotta hashtag deal with it, man. Something's going on. Then he comes back at night as Batman and checks the crime scene. He feels better with the mask on. We, we, we've all discussed that fetish at nauseum. It's fine. I know. So he takes the mask, runs back to the cave to run some tests. But meanwhile, in the Sionis family crypt in uh, Ravenswood Cemetery, <sighs> you see Black Mask and his gang in a mausoleum full of masks. Is that a Gene Simmons mask? Only if it has a headband. Yeah. Well, whatever one has the star on their face and the tongue out. Yeah. Oh, Gene Simmons. Not the Simmons. What? <laughs> oh, oh, the other Simmons. No, not, yeah, not Richard Simmons. Gene Simmons. Hashtag don't judge me. Oh. Means I've led a wholesome life. <laughs> That's the only Simmons I can come up with. Yeah, you're so wholesome. Uh, Black Mask basically telling his troops, you know, why do we wear masks and they're destroying their former identities and they have to wear the mask to be initiated into the false face society of Gotham. Isn't everyone in Gotham false faced? Yeah, pretty much. Let's just be honest. And Black Mask gets a new lieutenant. Uh, and they leave the crypt because he says... <laughs> Well, smartly, I guess everybody, uh, you know, everyone knows this was his last hideout, so they basically burned the crypt. Then, meanwhile, right next door to Wayne Manor, where young Timothy Drake and his father have moved in. Convenient. Well, I think a couple issues back, that's what they're like. He's like, I don't want to break up the team. And, you know, Bruce and Elfer are like, well, the house next door is for sale. For a dollar. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, just just in the one panel which is like look at the size differential between the Drake house and the and Wayne Manor I'll be honest those were slave quarters those were slave quarters <laughs> just well, saying well you know well what's well, ironic that Tim Drake's stand, living there then why does Batman wear black <laughs> no why does Robin wear red and Batman exactly. black yes. Batman doesn't like to get shot <laughs> So Tim runs over to the house and Batman still, well, Bruce is still running a uh, test on the mask he found at the arson scene. And then the phone rings. Uh, and it's Lucius Fox. Uh, ah, yeah. To good let him, good giggle, Lucius. To let him know there's been a fourth, fourth fire in one of a uh, Wayne property. Arson. So sexy. Yeah. Gotta love it. Almost like someone's trying to... Uh, ruined Bruce Wayne, you know, because a lot of his money is tied up in real estate. And no tenant wants to rent in a uh, arson-threatened building. Um, it's Gotham. Every, uh, potentially every, every apartment. I know. Down Have you met Gotham? <laughs> you could be shot and killed in any, uh, any moment. Or worse. Or gassed. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, Harry Potter reference. I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, and Batman's asking Tim to hack into the chemical companies to see who made this high grade latex. <laughs> oh my lord, Tim. Who their most interesting latex customers are? Gotcha. <laughs> better watch. Better watch trying to figure out who the. <laughs> the most interesting latex customers are. And you want to be my latex salesman. Exactly. <laughs> anyway. It's really in all the young kids these days with our references. With our, with our young hip references. Hey, Seinfeld is timeless. 
makes us feel a little bit like Charlie Huffman. Hey, hey, that Picard series is going to make all our Star Trek The Next Generation references uh, hip again. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to whip out a few. <laughs> whip it out, love. Uh, Crazy. <clears throat> and then uh, while they're running, while they're looking that up on the computer, Alfred's like, sir, the signal. <laughs> So Batman and Robin go, of course, to the head, uh, roof of police headquarters. And Gordon's talking about, I was thinking about these arsons and, the, you know, the list of Arkham escapees. And Batman's like, Roman Sionis, right? Black Mask. You know, like he had come out with it first, but I didn't see him mention it until Gordon mentioned, you know, Arkham breakout. Convenient. And then they talked about how Sionis murdered those Wayne Foundation directors a few years back. That's when the wife comes up and interrupts, and Batman just dis- Batman and Robin disappear. And of course, of course, Sarah doesn't approve of the Batman. That's all right; she'll get hers. Oh, Sarah X and never change. <laughs> she'll get hers. Just listen to our No Man's Land special. Exactly. Like, can't you just run off with uh, John Valley or whoever the hell is the flavor of the month? <laughs> like, just get out of here. And so, conveniently enough, like I said, I don't think. Uh, Black Mask had shown up uh, since before Crisis because uh, t- back in the Batmobile, Tim's like, who is this Roman Sionis anyway? So that gives Batman an excuse to explain who Roman Sionis is. He knew him as a kid because, you know, his family, I guess, had interactions with his parents and until until the family... Until the family died in a, you know, his parents died in a fire and he inherited the cosmetics company. But then he lost everything Come and try to uh, come up with uh, face paint makeup that basically just started melting people's faces off. Living out my fantasy. <laughs> yeah. So so basically, he like he gets kicked out of the company, loses his fortune, loses this the model he was dating. So he basically makes a black mask out of the coffin. Uh, what was it? His father's coffin or whatever. So then he starts going after. Uh, executives who kicked them out and even like the Wayne executives because Wayne Wayne Enterprises came in and like bought them out trying to like save the company but Roman didn't appreciate that but then of course he's you know yada yada Batman tried to stop him he set a trap at his old family estate the house starts burning down blah 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 and then of course his face gets messed up you know it's comic book so his face gets messed up in the fire because the fire like burn like burns the imprint of the mask right into his face so now his face is a black mask. Which it looks like a mask in this story, but like later on, like early what by the, I'd say what early two thousands, like he actually looks like a he looks like the red skull, except it's black. Yeah. Not the best look. Just gonna be honest. Nah, it doesn't get the chicks. Uh, I mean it'll get some chicks, but maybe not the chicks that you want. Goth chicks. <laughs> ha 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 ha. But of course, he was sent to Arkham Asylum, but until he escaped, which pff, I think that escapes big. Wait, wait a couple weeks, people. So they go to check uh, the mausoleum where he was at, but now it's just on fire. Then Black Mass sends his guys to pick up. Uh, was it Cersei? The uh, the model he was with, who uh, his cosmetics destroyed her face, and now she's homeless. You know, because all she had was her face. You know, because she was nothing without her face. Uh, then we see some blonde guy with a scar on his face uh, try to join the Black Mask group. Black Mask gives him a skull mask and says, your new name is Skullface. <sighs> I don't know, this guy looks like Matches Malone's son. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't use Matches Malone. There's a time and a place, Philip. A time and a place. <sighs> Guess he needs someone younger and hipper than Matches. There's no smoking. There's no smoking in this gang. Ah, oh, crap. I can't use matches. So would matches Malone vape these days? Definitely. He'd be the jewel <gasps> spokesman. What's your name? I, I'm Fate, Fate Malone. <laughs> <coughs> I need that to happen so bad. Hey, we need to buy DC. We can make it happen. I got a dollar. <laughs> you got a dollar. Charlie got a dollar. That's all it's worth. Tyler, you got a dollar. Four dollars. My final offer, AT and T. So, Otherwise, I'll let Disney buy it in five years. It's fine. <laughs> so, uh, then we, so we see 
skull face, quote unquote, go on a, another arson job with Black Mask crew. But hey, who dropped that Batman costume behind what? The, uh, looks like a furnace or something. Skull face is like, I'll go check on that strange noise. And of course, Robin pops out and once he changes, Batman pops out. Take out the two Black Mask thugs. Because Batman takes off his mask and <gasps> it's Skull Face, the man with the scar. Batman tells Robin, yeah, call Lucius and tell him he needs to hire from a new security agency. This one's, uh, you know, hiring guys loyal to Black Mask. But then Skull Face goes back to Black Mask and he's like, how'd you get away from the Batman? And Oh my lord, I can't believe he says, I'm a fairly big man, as big as Batman. Hmm, you don't say. You're as big as Batman, huh? But there then, you go. But then while Skull Face is trying to uh, convince Black Mask, you know, everything's on the up and up, uh, his lieutenant comes in with <gasps> Lucius Fox. <laughs> I guess they must have been roughing him up because he's, I don't know, Lucius is bleeding. I don't know if it's from the nose or the mouth, but Black Mask takes some of his blood and wipes it on his mask or face or whatever. <sighs> War paint. Ah, these dramatic Gotham villains. You know, I, I'm secretly thinking they're all secretly from Krypton and just have a little bit too much flourish. <laughs> Deal before Black Mask. <laughs> you will respect my authority. <laughs> Seriously. All right, so that guess that that's where Batman 485 picks up. Oh my lord. And then, because Lucius Fox is even asking Black Mask, he's like, why me? And Black Mask says, why? Two easy answers. Both are sick and easy. Number one, because you made me lose face. Ouch. Ouch. That hurt, Philip. I know. And number two, because your blood therefore makes perfect war paint. Okay. Oh, here's the issue, Dave. <laughs> oh, oh, the... No, I thought it was Faces of Death. Oh, I thought it was Warpaint. Faces of Death, no. It's, uh, okay. We're in a Charles Bronson movie or something. Uh, uh-huh. Sure. Oh, the hip-hop popular culture. No. So, when Bruce is standing there watching in the skies and thinking, am I going to blow my cover? And, but Black Mask isn't going to kill Lucius Fox because he really wants Bruce Wayne. As everybody does. His ex-girlfriend stops him. She's like, don't kill him. He's no use to you dead. And, you know, the Bruce Wayne financial directors are a dime a dozen. And Bruce is thinking, oh, cool. I can hold back. Uh, he, tells, he whispers to Lucius, it's okay. It's me. Rest easy. I'm thinking, talk about blowing your cover. He's like, yeah. At this point, Lucius doesn't know Bruce Wayne is Batman. So he's just like, oh, yeah, it's me, Bruce Wayne. Don't worry. I'd be like, okay. This, this billionaire playboy who doesn't know how to fight, has gone undercover and my life rests in his hands? Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? He doesn't know he's Batman, so it's like... This guy probably doesn't know how to, like, order takeout and he's getting, is this guy's gonna save my life? Okay. Plausible deniability, okay? I guess. Uh, but then Skullface says, uh, he tells Black Mask he knows some torture techniques, and Black Mask is like, oh, you can show us tomorrow night, so. So, I know he doesn't want to blow his cover, but Bruce just, like, leaves, you know, Lucius there. It's like, okay, what if Black Mask changes his mind in the middle of the night? Uh, then we see Robin at police headquarters talking to Gordon, and Gordon telling him about the struggle they found, the signs of a struggle they found in Lucius's office. And it was probably an abduction because Howard Rambo, another Wayne Corp executive, was kidnapped. And disappeared. Just eat the rich! Do it! Gotham, you're so close! Just do it! <laughs> and I love Tim's, at least smart enough to say, Who's Lucius Fox? You don't need to know. It is not important. Well, he knows. He just has to fake it. I know. It's unimportant. These are not the droids you're looking for. It's fine. Then Gordon gets all mad when Robin tells him, yeah, Batman knows where Black Mask is at. That's where he's at right now. Gordon's like, tell me. I'll get Montoya and Bullock. He's like, no, no, no. Batman's not, oh, honey. Batman's not ready yet. So, of course, Gordon's like, oh, maybe my wife is right about 
these vigilantes. So then, who is this? Uh, oh yeah, Black Mask. Uh, Black Mask Lieutenant, who I guess was, was he just calling him Tattoo? Because he got the tattooed face. Probably. Look, boss, they claim, they claim. Uh, oh my lord, this this gang is just sad. One guy's just wearing a shopping bag on his head. Oh my lord, he even says shop and save. We have a shop. We have shop and saves around here. So one guy gets mouthy because he doesn't want to wear a mask. So tattoo just basically smashes his face in. And Bruce is thinking he's as fast as me in my prime, and I've been slowing down. With or without a mask, this won't be easy. Then they go back to report that black mask until skull face gets dismissed, and black mask is out tattoo. What do you think about the? Uh, Skull face. He's like, he may not be a cop, but he's like a black cat. Bad luck and too much curiosity. Uh, so we see Tim was listening from the rooftops, but <laughs> Batman tells him to keep listening and swings off. Batman goes to talk to Gordon. Interrupts Gordon and Sarah, which doesn't make uh, either one of them very happy. Then Batman tells Gordon, Sharky's pool hall, 10 o'clock tomorrow night. You should get good three quarters or more of the false face society too bad it wasn't king sharky oh. <laughs> gordon's like oh i guess we'll just clean up and you're gonna take matters into your own hands and then batman's like i'm not gonna fail to bring him down and gordon's like oh yeah even though you're not willing to share that information and uh gordon, <laughs> batman's like i thought we had this conversation a long time ago and gordon's like oh maybe i should have pursued it and he says all right all right all right my sole concern is saving lives while bringing down evil. Fair enough. Uh, so begrudgingly, Gordon agrees to take down the gang at the pool hall. And then Batman goes back to Tim and says, go home, get some sleep for school, and then come back after school. And Batman takes over uh, surveillance. And we see another night and day with little or no sleep. While problems smolder and multiply on Bruce Wayne's desk. It's not age, so maybe it's simply the effects of too much time put in. Maybe sustained and prolonged stress is the one thing no man can train himself to overcome. See, remember when we covered that Detective Comics? And he could get eight hours of sleep in like one hour with his techniques. See, there's some things that can't counter. And maybe there's a limit to how much evil and madness anyone can endure. Uh, so Batman, I guess, spends the day on the list my all the rest of the night and day listening then then we see tattoo uh has uh tail and rambo somewhere locked up <laughs> then the next day after school tim gets back he goes got here as soon as i could you look bad better get some rest hmm so something's starting to affect batman hmm whatever could it be i don't know so he takes a quick nap and then he gets up Tells Robin, whatever you hear going on down there, don't make your play before 10 o'clock. You know, because that's when the raid's going down at Sharky's. So, Black Mask is threatening Lucius. He's like, I'm going to, you know, put some of this uh, old makeup on you that can turn you into this. And points to his old girlfriend whose face is all melty. It's like, I'll make you a butterface. Oh, my lord. And he literally says, now either you wish to save face, Mr. Fox, or you don't. Yikes. All right. Somebody come get their grandpa and their uncle and their dad. This is enough. <laughs> and Lucius says, no. Black Mass says, as you wish. And that's when Skull Face. As you wish, you say. That's when Vape Malone comes charging in and, uh. Like, draw, tries to drop kick Black Mask. Tattoos, like, smacks him. And Tim's looking. It's only 9.43, but can I wait any longer? <sighs> and just like his Clark Kent disguise, they're like, hey, this scar on his face is fake. Wait a minute. Without the scar and the blonde hair, yes, that's Bruce Wayne. How can I not see it? So his Black Mask is about to shoot him. Cersei knocks the gun out of the way. He smacks her in the face. Can't do much more worse. Uh, and then who... Did Bruce Wayne or Tim drop the smoke bomb? Because all of a sudden a smoke bomb goes off. But Bruce gets out with Lucius. Again, Lucius should have known by now. I mean, Bruce gets Lucius out. They run right to Robin. I'm like, okay. I guess Lucius is out of it. But he goes, get Lucius out of here and call an ambulance for Cersei. I'm going back in. 
Okay, Bruce Wayne. Uh, then we see Montoya, Montoya and Bullock trying to... Well, they're about to start the raid on Sharkies. Uh, after Bullock's hitting on Montoya. Then Black Mask is just about to shoot into the smoke when he, the gun gets taken out by a batarang. Uh, then Gotham Tower. I mean, uh, plot device. I mean, Gotham Tower tolling 10 o'clock. So Batman knows the raid's going to go down. No matter what happens here, the raid's going to go down. Which we see happen. Then we see Batman taking on Black Mask and Tattoo at the dock. I guess they're going to get away by boat. Uh, looks like Tattoo's taking Batman down, but then he says, bring it on. Uh, Batman basically, well, he takes down Tattoo, but then he's like, your turn, Black Mask. And I guess Black Mask kind of jumps in the river and Batman passes out. Here we see Black Mask just jump in the river and then Batman's just like laying on the dock. Uh, but then at the end, Gordon's telling Batman, yeah, we dragged the river, but... We didn't find Black Mask. They found a, someone who looks like Black Mask, but it was uh, Howard Rambo, that missing Wayne Corp executive. And Batman's like, oh no, that means the war's not over. It's merely on hold. I did fail. Which we'll get to in the next two issues, I think. Yeah. Batman trying to hunt cool. down Black Mask. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to call it that. Yes, very weird. Uh, so, Lil Hellfire, what did you think? Um, Black Mask was an interesting choice. Fall fan. Interesting choice. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. It, it, was, it could have used a little more cat and mouse, but it's okay. Well, I think the whole thing was, like we said, Black Mask hadn't shown up since, like, uh, before Crisis. I think... Doug Mensch, who wrote who wrote these, I think he's the one who wrote those original Black Mask stories. Okay. So I think it's I think it's like another case of like what we talked about before. You know, certain writers like having a certain uh, certain feelings for certain characters, especially when they created them. Yeah. I don't know. What did you think of this art? I really wasn't a fan of the art in this. I've seen worse. Yeah, I mean, I've seen worse, but I don't know. Just I don't know if it's Tom. It was a little dull. Not Tom Grand. <laughs> Grindberg, something touched up on the coloring. Yeah, the coloring and just like some of the the panel construction too. A lot of it didn't make it didn't make for a great flow of the story either. And just some of the proportions of some of the people just seem like the very. It's Gotham. Or, you can't question that. It's Gotham. I know, but it would just look like it. Look at like look at Tim Drake. I mean, he almost, almost looks as big as Batman. Some steroids. That's what happens when you live next to Wayne Manor, man. It's a lot of creepy stuff going on under there, you know? Boy, your pencil neck geek. You need to, <laughs> need to bulk up. It was Mr. Wayne. <sighs> so, yeah. So, Batman's starting. That's why we started here. Batman's starting to feel the strain of his, I guess, his never-ending war. I mean, that's the most realistic thing they ever did for Batman. Let's just oh, die. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to remember how many years that I thought they... Was it like five or ten years? Like five or ten years he's been Batman's, you know, supposedly story wise. Yeah, that, so. that's a rough five to ten years. Oh yeah, that's like the Obama presidency. Why aren't you more gray, Bruce? You, uh, even, even Superman got gray. <laughs> like holy crap, he got all those scars. What's that line in Kingdom Come? You'll live, us, you'll outlive us all, Bruce. I'm like probably rich people do uh do suck the S inside of uh babies. So, oh yeah, and I'm sure he can, he can buy the best medical care money, you know. But then you also got to get a doctor that ain't gonna ask too many questions. Again, rich people, <laughs> um, they can find anything, and it's Gotham. Exactly. <sighs> All right. So, anything else, or should we get out of here? Let's get out of here. All right. So yes. Uh, Check the Before the Bat Facebook page. You'll see the complete list of all the issues we're going to be doing. Uh, next next episode, we're going to be covering Batman 486, featuring Batman versus a new villain who you'll never see again, uh, Metalhead. I guess Batman doesn't like the genre. <laughs> Could be worse. Could have been Iron Maiden or something. Anyway. 
So, yes, yeah, send your thoughts on all the upcoming uh, Nightfall issues. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. And like I said, you can find the complete list on the Before the Bat Facebook page. You can find all of our social media at Linktree. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And remember to support our sponsors, uh, Pod Life the Book, uh, Hunt a Killer, Tweaked Audio, and check our show notes for the link when you go on Amazon, because you know you all do. Uh, use the Southgate Media Group link. It will not affect you at all. You can use it with Amazon Prime, all of it, but it uh, sends a few cents our way, so <laughs> Master Doom can put these episodes up because, hey, you know you want more. So, please do all that. And, Miss Lilith Hellfire, what mask can people find you under? Uh, you can find me under any one of my internet masks by uh, looking on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire or on Instagram at Lilith Hellfire 69. I was going to... Alright, I'll wait. I'll do the dub first. Duh. Hello, Megan. I was going to say, any of her aliases, they all have 69 after it. Get it. Get it. Alright. So let's get out of here. Again, thank you for starting this long journey with us. Well, it's all the help you can get. We get through this. Remember, we're just at the beginning. That man downfall is just beginning. Still gotta get to Azrael, still gotta get to Spain. Gotta get to when you get Batman's road get Rogue's Gallery in a big bad way. Come on. So 44, 45, gotta get that. Run the Batman 500 in the air. Batman Bill. Batman 486, then 47, 488. Uh, I don't run after that. Like I said, for the bat, Facebook page. Get the complete list. Come back next time. Same bat time, same bat channel.